Well, we are 10 days into Iditarod 51, and we are more than likely to have a winner later this morning. Now, at last check, the leaderboard showed Ryan Reddington checking out of White Mountain just after midnight, and he is on his way to safety and then, of course, Nome. Let's go live now to Beth Verge from Nome to give us kind of a glimpse into Reddington's mindset and how his run in Iditarod 51 has gone so far. Beth, good morning. Good morning, Ariana. Beautiful morning here in Nome. Those winds not too bad just yet, but we'll see how the morning goes uh, and see what that looks like in just a few hours, as you said. Hopefully seeing a finisher in that time. But you mentioned Ryan Reddington leaving the White Mountain checkpoint just a few hours ago. He is headed to safety, and he's followed by Pete Kaiser and Richie Deal in that order. Both of them have also left the White Mountain checkpoint. Matt Hall looks to be leaving around 6 30, 640, so right around now if he's just leaving right on that eight-hour mark. Uh, but as you mentioned, looking into the mindset of Ryan Reddington throughout the course of this race has been very interesting, and for him, it does actually seem as though I did a Rod 51 is mostly going according to plan. An early bib drop. Oh, carrying on a family legacy, that is Ryan Reddington from Connecticut. Number five, right out of the gate. More than 150 miles into this race, Ryan Reddington and team reaching Rainy Pass. The musher happy with his dog team thus far. It's going good. It's early yet, but uh, the dogs will get a good rest here. And, and uh, then we'll go through Roan and hopefully that session goes good too quickly establishing his position at the front of the pack. I did around 51 hasn't been without challenges. I got a broken runner. But with a boost here and there. This is the spirit of Iditarod Award. Spirit still high by the halfway point in Old Town Iditarod. Left, left, left. Oh, oh. You want to go to the left and go all the way up to the, oh. to the boom and oh. I want to, there's a spot where I want to make a move. And further up the trail and you see everything's got to be just right though but yeah um, I like the position that we're in we're we're not too far out of striking distance so I don't think so yeah I'm having fun there it's a really nice team of dogs once in the lead his competitors have stayed hot on his tail namely Pete Kaiser and Richie Deal. Yeah, I'm aware that they're coming and uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun to try to fight them off. But the grandson of Joe Reddington Sr., the father of the Iditarod, with new strategies in his arsenal. I wanna bring home the trophy for the family and for me, uh, but it's a long ways to go to know you. Uh, if you're going to win this thing, you got to be in a position like this. Um, we might not, but I'm sure having fun trying. Now pushing a record pace, closing in on Gnome, and hoping to finally take the title home. And Beth, you know the name Reddington does hold some weight in this race. Does Ryan feel any pressure for a win because of his family's legacy? Yeah, you are not wrong about that area. And that's a lot of the chatter that's happening now is that a Reddington could finally take home the title. Joe Reddington Sr. founding this race and Ryan trying to bring that trophy that bears his grandfather's likeness home in 2023. So, you know, I mentioned strategy in that story you just saw, and he kind of took a different approach to this year's race. But with just about 50 miles, a little less than that left, it's still just as important to keep plugging along and making sure that he's taking all of the necessary steps to finish strong. And I do also want to mention three Alaska Native mushers are leading this race right now which is really quite amazing to see and just something that people are very excited about as well so again the finish we're expecting it likely sometime later this morning but we'll have to see how things unfold and you can join us for the live coverage of that finish Ariane. all right beth thanks so much well, of course, getting to Nome isn't just a goal for the mushers. Many people around the world, they have it on their bucket list. The excitement was starting to build Monday. Our crew said you could physically feel the hustle and bustle in that small town as people are waiting to see who will be that first musher to cross under the Burled Arch. 
so my game plan is I have everything laid out. Uh, so <laughs> kind of like a fireman. So when um, the first musher, whoever he or she may be, um, whenever we get the alert that they're coming up uh, down the Bering Sea, then we can just throw our gear on and head up here and obviously try to get as close as possible. And now checking the official leaderboard this morning to see our top 10 mushers. So Ryan Reddington, of course, leading. He did come into White Mountain at 4.12 p.m. Monday, started his eight-hour rest, but then left just after midnight. Uh, Pete Kaiser and Richie Deal, they both have been on each other's heels, both getting into White Mountain around 8.30 last night, less than 10 minutes apart. Kaiser left White Mountain early this morning, of course, with Deal just six minutes behind him. Now, of course, to see where the mushers are at in real time, this is the Iditarod GPS tracker. This is something that we've been refreshing, we've been watching, keeping our eye on, of course, Reddington there on his way to safety. He's less now than 20 miles out from that checkpoint. Once he gets to safety, that finish line to Nome is only 22 miles. You can see P. Kaiser, as Beth mentioned, he's right behind him, racing at 8.4 speed. Richie Dio racing at 7.9 speed. Uh, and of course, the rest of the mushers making their way into or resting there at White Mountain. So again, we are keeping a close eye on this race. Be sure to keep it to Alaska's news source as we will go live to see who the winner will be when it crosses under the Broad Arch in Nome a little bit later this morning.